My name is uh, Dr. Boniface Muli Mutua. I am an environmental scientist and also the founder of EcoStrides Solutions. We are based uh, in Joro, sub-county, uh, Igaton Center, uh, 500 meters from the university gate. And at EcoStrides, we are doing recycling of biomass into briquettes. Uh, briquettes are pressed uh, biomass source of energy. We make uh, this energy from charcoal waste. First time I learned about uh, briquettes was way back in the year 2018 when I operated a hotel, one of my suppliers introduced me to charcoal briquettes, so I got some keen interest on briquettes. As an environmental scientist, I know about uh, clean energy. I saw it good, I put it into practice, and that is what we are doing here at EcoStrides. Well, starting this business was not easy because I lacked the machinery and also the technical know-how. Through some literature review and internet uh, searches, I was able to get a rough idea on how briquettes are made. We are making our briquettes from charcoal dust. We press, then we get our briquettes. Currently, we are using charcoal residue. That is uh, the residue we collect from charcoal vendors. So we bring it here. Then once we bring it here, we sort, then crush, add, add uh, some binder, then we press and dry. We source our raw materials from the charcoal sellers. That is after they've sold their charcoal, there is that waste, they call it charcoal dust. Sometimes we do lack uh, raw materials and in such scenarios we are forced to go to further places so that we can get sufficient uh, raw material to supply our, our production process. Our customers uh, include the house odds, if also the hotels and the poultry farmers. The best thing with briquettes is that uh, we are providing two solutions in one. One of the solutions we are providing is on waste management because uh, the charcoal residue is a waste. So we are providing a solution to, to solid waste management. We are also providing a solution to our forest cover because the ordinary charcoal is sourced from the forest. And as we know, uh, forest cover is going down day by day. Yeah, we are operating in a 100 by 50 feet and it's quite a small place, but we are trying to make use of the available space so that we can contribute to climate change uh, mitigation. Yeah, currently our space is limited, as I've said, and we are planning to increase our space whereby we can install dryer so that we can, we can dry our briquettes, especially during the rain season when we usually get a big challenge in drying the briquettes. Uh, one of the challenges we are facing well when we do this business is that uh, there is low perception on briquettes and there is a need that we try to raise uh, the awareness so that uh, many people, many households can adopt to this clean source of energy. The perceptions comes, I think, uh, because of the quality of briquettes. I think there is that lack of uh, training because uh, several guys are into briquettes uh, production, but the quality is not standardized. So when a customer encounters the low quality briquettes, it's like they turn off. But uh, there's that need that we break that barrier by probably during a few days so that we can break that barrier and uh, so that they can upscale the uptake of briquettes. A good briquette is that kind of a briquette that will not break easily, that will burn for a longer period of time and to also not emit any, any smoke or any odor that is in terms of smell. The quality is key and from my background I can tell, because I, I'm a researcher, I can tell the quality of a briquette. So one of the places they go in is the binder, the kind of material they are using. That is, I think that is where both basically they go wrong. Yeah, some guys uh, use, uh, some producers use soil to bind. As we all know, soil is not, doesn't burn. So once you make your briquettes from 
with soil as the binder, you'll definitely get poor quality briquettes. Another binder is molasses, but molasses has that uh, unique smell, so it is not a, a very good binder. But currently we are doing cassava, we call it tapioca, and tapioca relatively brings a quite quality briquette. Our first line of customers are the households. Households are adopting to briquettes. We also have the hotels. We also have farmers especially who are doing brooding. So there is quite a huge market for briquettes despite the low perception. We are selling a kilo at 30 shillings and we also have a bag uh, that is 50 kilogram bag and that is going for 1,500, that is 1,500. In a good day we can sell close to close to 500 kilograms of briquettes. Okay. Briquettes is a profitable business because the market is there, uh, briquettes are cheap, thereby the profit margins are not that bad. We've been trying to scale up but uh, there are those challenges because we need the, inf the, the, the infrastructure, we need, that is, we need the structures, we need the machines for upscaling. So setting up is not uh, that easy. I was able to raise around uh, 200,000 and from the 200,000 I was able to acquire a simple press machine and also a crusher and also in the construction of the greenhouses for drying. A piece of advice I will give to guys who like to enter into this business is that uh, don't hesitate, just start from where you are, uh, things will come as you move. These machines are locally fabricated and they are in the market. We started with two workers, currently we have four workers. As you use briquettes, it's, also, it's, good, it's equally good you, you be aware that is, this is biomass energy and it emits carbon just like any other. The world is moving towards the green energy and there are opportunities for, 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 for green sources of energy and especially in the briquette market. We are fighting uh, uh, energy poverty because as we all know, uh, families living below a dollar per day the only source of energy is charcoal, and here we are bringing quite cheaper source of uh, charcoal in terms of briquettes. When I'm not teaching, this is where I spend my time. In the next 10 years, I, we, I see ourselves uh, have, having a, uh, quite an established uh, farm whereby we'll be uh, recycling more waste and also doing other, uh, other activities on the circular economy concept. Uh, one thing I constantly tell my students is that uh, they should practice what we teach them in class because most of the class work is, can be applied. So it's good after you, you've you learned, uh, get away, be innovative or get away whereby you can apply your knowledge. It's not necessarily you be employed, but you can create an establishment like just like this one and by so doing you create an employment for yourself and also for a colleague or two. To be very sincere some of our colleagues uh, see this as a dirty stuff but uh, one thing I have loved about it is that I'm, I'm putting what I teach into practice. Get our hands dirty and implement what we teach. It's good uh, my colleagues uh, change that perception and put into practice what you teach. Whenever I step into this establishment and I find dry briquettes, that crackling noise really gives me joy because that is ready briquettes, ready to hit the market. What makes me sad is when the machines are not running. Yeah, that is that makes me sad. We are trying as much as we can to satisfy the needs of our customers. I would encourage each one of us to embrace the cleaner source of energy just like briquettes and for us to solve these uh, environmental ch challenges especially on emissions that is carbon emissions is good we become innovative so that we can fill the gaps because i believe in i believe that uh, kenya as well as africa we have solutions to our problems it's not always a must we look to the west but i know that we have the solutions to our problems and one of the ways we can do is uh, creating homemade solutions for such